everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy at Attic Treasures, etc. And I'm really glad you're here today because I want to share um, some of the things that I've been making out of scraps. I've been really into using my scraps lately to try to reduce the amount of scraps that I have. And if you saw my video of making the flow journal that I have uh, some in my Etsy shop right now, you'll notice that I used wallpaper on the inside of the flow journal. And because I had to cut each of the pieces down to fit, I had several pieces or strips of wallpaper left over. And I wondered what to do with them. So I thought, well, I will make a bunch of mini journals. So that's what I've done. They all have similar construction and they will all be in my Etsy shop, but every single one of them is one of a kind. So let me just kind of take you through how I did it. So this is a piece of wallpaper that I attached some, uh, this one has gold ribbon. There's a pocket on the front right here with a tag inside that you can journal on the back. One of the flowers that I made, and I did a video on making these flowers too, so I, I will link all of the videos that, um, that I have that show how I made each of the elements and I'll put it in a little playlist for these journals and inside it's just one signature sewn in of uh, some coffee dyed paper and then I also have a ticket this is a raffle ticket and what I did with the raffle tickets is I ran it through my copier with a page from one of my copyright free uh, books that I have and uh, just copied some of the images on there Put a napkin over the top of it and then um, I just cut these little holes with a with a punch so each one of these can be used as a bookmark or a journal tag and then there's napkin on the inside or some some sort of decoupage on the inside and then there's also a couple of pages of pretty stationary in each one as well for extra writing space and I used some of the same gold ribbon on the spine, just kind of smushed on there. <clears throat> and on the back is one of these little flip down folio things. And um, I have a video on how I made these as well, which I will include in the playlist. And then a little, uh, just a little pull down, flip down uh, paper journaling spot in the pocket in each one of these. So every one of these, like I said, is different. They Each one has a different type of, or, you know, they, they're all kind of the same, but different um, colors and patterns and uh, closures for each one. These are chipboard tiles that I salvaged out of some of my old scrapbooking um, um, things <laughs> that I have. And so I just uh, decoupaged on them and stamped on them. And I have a video of showing how I did that as well. Okay, so we have one here. And then, like I said, each one is different in that it's different wallpaper, different colors, different napkins. Um, all the flowers are unique. Different tags on the inside. And they all will go in my Etsy shop. So... Since I have one more piece left, I thought it would be fun to make one of these on camera. So let me put these aside and I'll show you how I did all that. Also, if you stay till the end of the video, um, I am going to be having a giveaway because I have reached 2,000 subscribers. I'm actually a bit beyond that now. And I wanted to say thank you to everybody for subscribing and, and following my channel. I really appreciate that so much. Okay, so here's my piece of uh, wallpaper that I have left over from when I was doing the flow journals. And it is about 11 and a half inches long. And one, two, three, four, five, six and a half inches tall. But the edges aren't real straight, so I want to uh, trim those up. And I'm also, without really measuring, I'm just kind of... Uh, cut you know making a mark of where kind of where I want to fold it and then I will score in those places because I want it to overlap so this is kind of a kind of a little mini journal kind of a little folio so it could almost be called 
a journal oleo. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way and get my trimmer. And also, I want to mark where I want to score these so that I'm sure of them being straight. And in the right spot. Okay. So I really just want straight edges. So I um, have been kind of laying low the past couple of weeks because I've been dealing with some health issues that, you know, nothing really serious, but it just really affected my energy level quite a bit. So I haven't really been doing a lot of crafting, or at least not for very long. Um, but I'm back in the game today. Okie doke. So now I want to score on these lines. Okay. So we're done with this. And then the other thing I want to do is mark where I want to put some slits here to run my ribbon through. And before I run the ribbon through, I want to take a little bit of this Distress Collage Medium. This is the from Ranger. And I really, really love this stuff. I just wish I didn't go through it so fast. And I'm just going to um, just coat just the tip of, of the ribbon so that it doesn't fray. And I have used Fray Check before, so I'm just going to set these aside to dry. I've used Fray Check before, but it seems to want to bleed into the ribbon, especially if the ribbon is kind of a silky one. And I found that using just a brush of this collage medium on, just on the edge really, really does the trick. Okay, and then again, these were just some scrap pieces of ribbon that I had in my stash and I just kind of cut them at an angle and I just have enough just to be able to tie a bow. <clears throat> so just for reference, this is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about, about nine and a quarter at the short end. But you know, it doesn't really matter. That's not important. Just, as long as you have enough to tie a bow or whatever kind of closure you want to put on there, is great. I'm going to move that. Uh, now, I want to be able to mark the center of this. So I'm just going to make a little pencil mark. And I want to go about, I want them to be about half an inch. So that's how big the slit will be in this fold right here. Let me make sure I'm in frame. There we go. It's a little better. So maybe I better mark the <laughs> instead of taking a chance of it not being even, I'm gonna go ahead and mark on this side as well. Okay. Now when I go across here I'm just taking not this not the center line but the two top marks and the two bottom marks there so this is where the slit is going to be now, because sometimes the inside of the slit shows uh, when you when you fold it over, I'm just going to ink this up right here. Actually, no. <laughs> okay, so before that, I'm taking a little bit of masking tape. Okay, a little bit of masking tape on either side. I want to still be able to see the marks so that I can cut between them. But this will just reinforce um, so that it doesn't 
rip later. Okay, now I want to ink it. In case any of it shows when you have it uh, folded and open. All right. And then I also want to cut a thumb hole. So I'm going to use the first marks to cut a little thumb hole. It doesn't have to be very big. And these are simple to make and will make great gifts for anybody, anytime. I actually really think that the best gifts are the ones that aren't associated with any particular date. Because then they're spontaneous and unexpected and very much appreciated. Of course, gifts are always appreciated. But I like the whole spont spontaneous thing. Great hostess gift, great thank you gift. <clears throat> okay, now I want to add my ribbon and I want to make sure that that is dry and that did dry pretty fast. I'm going to thread it through the slit that I just made. And you only need to leave a little bit on the end. I am going to sew all the way around here once it's all done. Uh, once I get the, the decoupage napkin and everything on there. So this really doesn't need to be glued down terribly securely unless you're not going to sew. Take out the trusty fabric tack. Okay, so now, while that's drying, I'm going to um, decoupage on this, these napkin scraps. So I have this piece and this piece, and they're, on the, they're from the same napkin, or the same style of napkin. I don't know if they're from the exact same napkin. So I'm just going to um, decoupage on to the center. And not worry about, you know, I mean, it's, these are going to overlap, so it's going to be just fine. And I, I don't worry about these for a little bit of inking in the center in case the, um, the center shows. But that's where the signatures are going to be sewn in anyway, so it doesn't really matter. All right, I like to use my, um, this uh, collage medium for this process just because I really think that it works the best. I guess I'm not gonna to worry too much about that. Maybe I'll just ink over it and uh, maybe I'll hide it a little bit. And in reality, I really don't mind when that kind of stuff shows through because this is a junk journal. And that's what these, you know, we, we use, we reuse and repurpose and recycle things that otherwise would just be trash. So it's okay sometimes if those, uh, those little imperfections or whatever you want to call them show through. I don't have a problem with that. Now I find that my brayer does a pretty good job of making sure that everything gets flattened. And then I just add a little bit more Distress Collage Medium where I need it. Bring it down. Okay, that side's done. Get on the other side here. When I have uh, large surfaces to do, I will only um, glue down like the top half or I'll, I'll try to do it in stages because it seems to work a little bit better that way. Alright, I 
I'm just going to trim on the outside. It's easier to see the edge. So I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to give it another top coat. Now I'm just going to brush on some more of this Distress Collage Medium. Okay, and then for the final touch, I'm going to put some Mod Podge gloss over the top of everything because I really like the way it looks um, in these little mini journals. It just adds a little bit of something cool, I think. <laughs> I think it really brings out the colors. It makes it look special. I don't like the Mod Podge gloss for everything, but I really, really like it for this. Okay, a final dry, and then I'll be ready for the next step. Okay, I really like that. Put these away. And I'm just going to uh, wrap my brush in some wet paper towel because I'll be using it again later. Okay, now we have, I don't know if you can see it in the video or in the camera, but there are some little wrinkles in there and we can't just leave the wrinkles, right? But we can't get rid of them either. So... What I am going to do is take some of this Builder's Paste Wax in Antique Gold and I am just going to enhance the wrinkles just by going over it with my finger. To give it a little bit of a shimmer. And then that way, the wrinkles are um, more on purpose. <laughs> and then next, I'm going to ink around the, the whole journal here, the whole cover. I'm using Vintage Photo for this particular journal, but on the other ones, it just kind of depended what the main color was, um, you know, as to which color I used. Okay, so before I go over and sew this, I want to um, put the pocket on the front, or at least get the pocket cut, because I'm going to sew around the pocket as well. And here's another piece of scrap wallpaper, and I'm going to use the bottom part of it to make a pocket on the front. So I need it to be ruler, about three inches by about two inches I think. Let me take one and measure. Yeah, so three inches by two inches and I'll just use my exacto knife. I'll go two inches tall. And three inches wide but let's just make sure that the um, edges are straight cutting off just a little cat's whisker and then three inches long Find the center so I can put in a little thumb hole and also round the corners. And 
just going to use my corner chomper for this. And I'm just putting in a quarter inch radius on the bottom there. That one didn't cut very well. There we go. And so that will go on right here. But I want to stitch around it. And I'm also going to ink around it. Okay, so I will be right back after I finish the stitching. Okay, so now I've got it all stitched around and I'm ready to glue the pocket on. And um, then we can put in the signature. So I'm going to glue on the outside of the stitching. Between the stitching and the edge of the pocket, I guess I should say. I'm going to set something on top of that just to keep it in one, one place. And I'm going to take uh, my papers and ink around the, the papers. So I just have some copy dyed papers. I just took a, a piece of copy sized paper that I have already dyed and cut it down to about, um, I think it was six by five and a half. And be folded in this direction like that and this one I already had so I'm going to put that one in the center and then this is some stationery that is roughly the same size I'm going to fold that and then this will be um, kind of like the little signature cover ish so while I'm while that is drying, I'm going to take my corner chomper and round all the corners, just because. <laughs> totally unnecessary, but I, I like to do it. And then, always inking. But, I'm going to turn the camera off while I'm inking because this is like the most boring part <laughs> of a video, in my opinion. So I'm going to turn it off and I'll be back once everything is all inked around. Okay, so I have a little signature all inked and ready to go in. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm just going to sew it right in there. And one thing that really helps is to have it inked on the center like that, in the center crease, because then it's easier to guide the needle. So what I'm going to do now is um, just take some, some of these paper clips just to hold it in place before I start sewing. Of course, you don't have to sew. You can uh, just do like a three-hole pamphlet stitch or, you know, a staple or anything that you want just to just to hold them in there. And a staple would work fine, too, because we're going to cover the spine. So I'll be right back after I finish stitching. Okay, we're all stitched in. And the next step is to cover the spine. And I have a piece of chindi fabric, and I do have a video on how to use a chindi rug in your junk journals. And this is just one way to do it. You get a, a lot of really fun fabric if you uh, buy a cheap uh, jeweled chindi rug. Now you have to be careful because some of them are just made out of like jersey knit, like for t-shirt material. But others, if you look at them carefully, some of them have some really pretty fabrics inside. So I'm choosing this one to put on the spine. And I'm going to uh, start by just tacking these uh, thread ends down. I'm going to pull them, pull them to the back, to the outside. And I'm just using, whoop, not that one. Just using this to pull it through. So I'm just going to glue them down and then the, um, the fabric will cover it. So you just pull up on the thread and then the, there's a loop that comes up from the bottom. And then you just pull it through like that. I want to use my, my fabric tack. There we go. This might be 
a little bit too wide. And it is, so I'm going to trim it down just a little bit more. And then what I like to do is I like to kind of squish it so it gets a little bit of a, I don't know, <laughs> organic looking texture. You can do this with sari silk too, or seam binding. I've just been having fun using the, the chindi fabric. You can get all different colors in there too. It's, it's a lot of fun to work with. recommend washing the rug first but what I did actually was I uh, took out the pieces that I wanted I just sort of started disassembling it and then um, washed the strips in a, in a mesh bag but definitely you need to wash it <laughs> Then in my dryer, I have um, one of those racks that you can put in where you can like dry sweaters flat or tennis shoes or something like that. Um, so it just stays flat. And then I just kind of put them in a pile on that and let them dry. <laughs> and it worked out great. Let's get that thread in there. And then I just put some along the edges. so that it, everything is sort of laying down wherever it needs extra glue. For me, I don't know about you, but for me, the design phase is what takes the longest. You know, it took me probably, I don't know, a whole day to figure out how I wanted to make these and how I wanted them to be designed. And then, but once, once I got the design down, then I was able to, to mass make them. In. Does anybody else struggle with the design phase? Maybe I just overthink it. <laughs> I have been known to overthink things on occasion. You can ask my husband. But um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Myers-Briggs personality temperament um, profiles. Um, I've done mine several times. Companies sometimes use them for hiring so that they can get compatible people. But um, I, with my personality temperament, I like to look at all the possibilities. <laughs> and once, once I figure out all the possibilities, then I have a clear path. But it's that process that sometimes takes a while. Okay. All right, so I like that. It's perfectly imperfect, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna trim some off the top here. Now we get to finish embellishing it. Uh, okay, so before I put the flower on, I'm going to put uh, this little folio on the back. And like I said, I do have a video of how I made these and also how I toned down this uh, really, really, really bright um, paper. 
So I, oh, let me show you what it looks like inside. So we have um, a little mini paper pad here, a little scrappy pad and a pocket with a journal card that you can write on on the back with some little scrappy lace and just some other little embellishments. And it's edged in that gold, um, that Gilder's Paste Wax. Okay, so we're just going to glue the whole thing on. Now I could make a pocket with it, but none of the other ones have pockets except one. <laughs> and since I'm selling them all on my Etsy shop, I thought it would be good to have them be at least somewhat the same. Okay, so that needs to dry so the glue will grab. While that's drying, I'm going to take uh, my little mushroom sticker and put that right there. And these are kind of a challenge sometimes to pull apart, <laughs> to pull off the backing. Once you get it going, it comes off pretty fast, but it's just, oh, there we go. Whew. Boy, that's probably the best I've ever done with that. And we'll just put him right there. And then I've got this uh, little tag that I made. I made a bunch of tags a while back, and uh, this is one of them. But I want to put this little butterfly on. This is one of the Tim Holtz uh, transparent wings. And I'm in love with them. I just picked some up because I had a coupon at Michael's. What's fun is that my husband and I both have the Michael's apps. And so we get notifications of the sales separately. So he can use his discount and I can use my discount. And that way we can double up on craft discounts. Sometimes he gets things for... Um, making models. Oh, I was going to put it on here. <laughs> I forgot. Squirrel. And this says, to a friend. And I just um, cut this out of a book. It's where you can find a lot of nice little um, sayings sentiments or whatever you want to call them. Okay, and then I have this one too, and I kind of like this. It says, continue the conversation. Where does it want to be? Yeah, this isn't me. Un <laughs> this, this is me actually overthinking it. I'll have to think about that some more. Okay, how are you doing back here? I can dry and um, I made another one of these flowers so we'll put that on as well one of these little fuchsias and I'll link the video to how I made these so like I said earlier I will uh, whoops, put all the videos that I have used in the past that I'm for the elements that I'm using in this little mini journal I'll link it at the um, in the description the playlist for them to make them easy to find and then on here on this flap if I can grab it I'm gonna put these little these are actually buttons and you can you can see on the back the little um, holes to to sew them on with but I think they're so cute as you know little corner embellishments so I got these at Joanne in the buttons section and we were just there the other day because I'm almost out because I used them on all these journals, but they didn't have any more. So I'm hoping I can order them or maybe they will uh, reappear at Joanne at some point.
I cut this out a long time ago and it just seems like it wants to be on this journal. So we shall do that. You'll just put it down there. A little bit of art glitter glue. And I'm using art glitter glue as opposed to a glue stick because I'm gluing onto this vinyl wallpaper. Okay, so while that's drying, I wanted to show you what I'm uh, using for the giveaway for 2,000 subscribers. So I'm going to give away this little journal that I made, and I just fell in love with it. This is the first one that I made, and I had so much fun. Like I said, it took me a long time to figure out the design. But once I did, I was really happy with the way it turned out. So there's a little tag in the front with some journaling space on the back. Um, another one of my little fuchsias. It's got some purple sari silk um, as a tie and as this on the spine, little pocket here, and this is covered with um, napkin. And then on the inside, again, we have some uh, paper here. It's got that same napkin lining the inside that is on that uh, front pocket. And you can see that there with these little uh, corner embellishments, some paper inside there. Um, it's got, uh, let's see, one signature with eight, well, I guess that would make it 16 pages, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, yep, 16 pages. And then also another little tag that I made out of one of those raffle tickets that can be used as a bookmark or as um, a journaling spot with a little key on there. And then a thank you note from me for helping me to grow my channel. And I love you guys so much. It, this, is, this has really been quite the adventure for me, never having done anything with YouTube or Etsy or anything like that. Um, so, and then on the back, there's another one of these. Now this one I did put a pocket in and I was going to put pockets in all of them, but I forgot. So <laughs> we have a little journal card in here and there's a, a vintage stamp from New Zealand. This is covered with music paper and the napkin and it's got some vintage note paper in here and then this little, um, flip down notepad. So this is uh, for whoever is going to win this. And to do that, um, all you have to do is like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment. So anyway, my gift to you for helping me to grow my channel is this journal. And again, just like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. So I hope that you'll like that. Now let's see, how is this coming along? Are we dry? Yep, we're dry. Okay, so we're going to put this little tag in here, little bookmark made from one of those raffle tickets. And this is going to go in the front pocket. And put some paper in the side pocket. And voila, we have a little journal. So two, four, six, eight. So this one also has 16 pages. I think they all do. And just tie it up. And that came together pretty fast, didn't it? And basically using scraps. Now, if you want to know how to get a hold of wallpaper for your projects, there are several ways you can do it. I mean, I've seen them for the wallpaper books for sale on um, Etsy and on eBay and stuff like that. But if you have a paint store near you, like Sherwin-Williams or something like that, then um, you can call them up and ask them if they have any expired wallpaper sample books in stock. And if they do, many times they will just give them to you for free because otherwise there's nothing they can do with them if they're expired. They're just going to throw them away. So, you know, check, check that out. Find out if there's anything like that in your local area. 
and you know make a day of it and have fun so I got several of my wallpaper books for free anyway so I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you'll come back and see my next video and to do that just subscribe and um, hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload new content and again I appreciate each and every one of you so much and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye bye everybody have a wonderful day crafting